feeling of power. <laughs> wow! <laughs> well, after 13 months on the K&A, we're finally on Waters New. Welcome to Old Father Thames. <laughs> Coffee cheers. Oh, Coffee cheers. Down there. Coffee cheers. Do you know why it's called Old Father Thames? I've got no idea. No. The river gods back in the old days, because, um, well, back in kind of, you know, before Christianity and all that sort of thing, rivers were like the giver of life. Yeah. So they had river gods and, uh, the, yeah, Old Father Thames. He was the river god of the, of the Thames. Very good. Another interesting tales from the Swan's Neck Fact. So we haven't got our licence yet, we're about to get our licence in the first lock. You can get the licences online of course. Um, but uh, we're getting a seven day licence and we're hoping in that time to go all the way up to Lechlade and then back to Oxford. So Lechlade is about 70 miles and Oxford is another 30 miles from that. So it's like 100 miles in a week. Wow, that's cruising. More than I've done up to now. <laughs> <laughs> it is, because that's the whole length of the K&A, isn't it? And we're doing it in a week. As we pull into Caversham Lock, there are two volunteers and an environment agency, Lockie, on duty. We're the only boat in this huge lock. As I go into the office to sort out the licence paperwork, the volunteers bring Reverie up in the lock. That needs to be stuck in the window. Okay. Uh, Canal and River Trust licences aren't valid on some waterways unless you get a gold licence, which we don't have. So. A seven-day licence for the Thames is costing us £74. This, of course, does depend on the square footage of your boat. There was no Lockie on duty at Maple Durham, so we had to work out what to do ourselves. Another boater arrived and started to let water in, and this was before Val had hold of the bow line. So excuse the shaky camera work if there is some, but uh, someone's come along and uh, is giving us a helping hand, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, Val's on the bow line, and I've got the stern line wrapped around the bollard to hold us to the side. But actually, these locks behaved really, uh, really nicely. Thank you. Are you okay? The Thames, which in places is also called the Isis, is the second longest river in the UK and has over 80 islands of varying size. There are also 45 locks, dropping the Thames 55 metres from the source in Gloucestershire. It's a good idea to keep an eye out. There are plenty of rowers, canoeists, paddleboarders and swimmers in the water. You can see the sign on the bridge telling you that the lock is off to the right. I've got to say, the Environment Agency have signposted the Thames extremely well. Leaving the lock, the town of Pangbourne is to the left. There are good moorings below the lock, but we're heading up to the grotto. The house on the left was once owned by Jimmy Page, and it's reputed that the band Led Zeppelin was formed within these very walls.
exciting. Why? Well, this is like wild camping, but it's better. This is wild mooring. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've moored up for the night opposite the grotto. Uh, more about that in a bit, but um, anyway, yeah, so we've had, uh, what we, how many miles have we done today? Um, we've done 13 miles in all. 13 from, miles from, in all. From, uh, from, uh, from Fobney Island. Yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, so three of those were through Reading and then uh, 10 miles on the Thames and that was from about 12.30 till four o'clock-ish wasn't it? Yeah and so I think we did very well there. We did. I, that was a lot more than I thought we'd do. I must admit I'm, I mean yeah it was more, more miles than I thought we'd do so. Uh, yeah it was your first experience. Of, and very um, wonderful, very, very wonderful. Yeah. Um, I think it's even more freeing being on the Thames than it is being on a canal. It was the enormity of it of everything is uh, is quite amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, just before we started uh, filming, the fishing bailiff came along and told us that we're actually moored on private land here. Uh, he did say we could stay the night, um, but we're not really supposed to. Uh, I did moor in this exact same spot a year ago. Um, there are no signs, but he said that whenever they put signs up, they end up in the water. So, uh, yeah, if anyone is watching this with a view to mooring on the Thames, don't moor opposite the grotto because <laughs> it's private but anyway uh, we'll be leaving first thing in the morning and he was very nice about it so it was. Yeah. Okay. the grotto was built by Viscount Fane in 1720 for his wife Lady Mary Fane for her retirement and leisure retirement meaning resting because to be honest I doubt she did a day's work in her life According to the fishing bailiff we chatted to, it has now been sold to be developed as a hotel and a health spa. The following morning was bright and breezy. Time to head further upstream. It's been a very dry spring and summer and the fishing bailiff we spoke to at the grotto said that the level of the river is down about a foot. I'd also read that the source of the river had dried up at Thames Head and was now five miles downstream. morning viewers. Um, as you can see it's a lovely bright day but it's really quite windy. Hence all the clothing. <laughs> Four layers Val. <laughs> um, but anyway yeah we've just come through two locks this morning. Cleave Lock and Goring Lock. Or Goring Lock and Cleave Lock to be more precise. Uh, and I just wanted to say um, a couple of things about the, the locks really. Um, obviously the first thing is that you know you need to tie your uh, bow line and your stern line around a bollard as you're coming up. Obviously if you're a solo cruiser um, you can't do that so you know you'll have to try and do it with your um, uh, line. with your centre line that's the word I was looking for yeah um, and the other thing is that uh, and, and, and the locky in that in Cleve Lock actually asked me to turn my engine off and I'd completely forgotten that you're supposed to turn your engine off whilst you're in the locks. I don't actually know the reason why that is but hey there you go. So um, just a couple of locking tips for the Thames.
we decided to stop in Wallingford for lunch. The Thames abounds with ornate boat houses of all shapes and sizes, and many have been converted into residential properties in their own right. A word about the green and red marker boys. If travelling upstream, i.e. towards the source of the Thames, you must pass to the left of the green boys and to the right of the red ones. Obviously, if heading downstream towards London, the opposite applies. You stay to the right of the green boys and to the left of the red ones. For Winnie the Pooh fans, and I know there must be hundreds of you out there watching this, the World Pooh Sticks Championship are held here every March. Whitnam clumps can be seen rising above Day's Lock. We had to slow to a stop to allow these kids to move out of the way. You never know what kids are going to do, do you? Join us next time and we'll continue our cruise up the Thames from Abingdon to Oxford and beyond. <laughs>